Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to add this floating contact form to your Blogger website. Now I have shown you how to design this from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript in my previous videos. So you can go ahead and check that out. I will leave the link in the description of this video. Now this is how it works. We have this contact button over here and by default it will be like this. The contact form will not be displayed and when we click on this contact button, we can see we have this animation and we have this contact form displayed over here. And we also have some animations for these placeholders over here. So if I click on this input field, you can see we have this animation for this placeholder. So this is the contact form that we're going to add in our blogger website. So let's get started. This is the blogger website where we're going to add the contact form. And I'm using a theme that comes by default with Blogger. So if you go back to the dashboard and if you go over here to theme, you can see that I'm using this theme called Notable Light. So if you scroll down, we can see the theme is right here. Now let's scroll up and let's click on this arrow and click on Edit HTML. Now the first thing we will do is we'll create a contact form widget. So let's scroll down all the way to the bottom. Now here after this division, let's go ahead and create the widget. Now we have to create a blogger widget inside a blogger section. So let's create a blogger section first. So let's type B section. And we need to have an ID for the section. So let's type ID equals. And I'll just give it an ID of contact container. And let's close the section over here. Now let's create a widget. So let's type less than B colon widget. Now for the widget, we need to have an ID and a type. So let's type ID equals and I'll just name the ID contact form one. And let's set the type to contact form. And let's close the widget over here. All right, now let's click on save. And we can see that our theme is updated successfully. So let's scroll down. And here we can see blogger has added a lot of code automatically because we added this widget with a type of contact form and this is all the content inside the contact form so now if you go back to our website and if i just refresh this page we can see we have the contact form displayed over here and we have the name email message and the button so now the next thing we need to do is we need to copy the code from this design and we need to add it to a blogger template code and we need to get some of the elements from this contact form and we have to add it inside the code so let me show you how to do that. Let's go back to our uh, template code. And uh, now here in this division with the class of contact form, I'll just make some space over here. And I'll just paste the HTML of our design over here. So let's go to the source code. And I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and copy this HTML from here. So everything inside the body till here. And I'll just copy this from here. And let's paste it over here. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to replace all these input fields in our design with the input fields in our contact form widget. So here we have the first input field for the name. So I'll just copy this line of code from here. And let's scroll up and here we can see we have the input field for the name. And here we also have a class called form input. So we have to add that class as well. So I'll just delete this line of code from here. And I'll just paste the line of code from the contact form widget. And now we need to add the class. So I'll just type form input over here. All right, let's do the same with all the other input fields. So let's scroll down. And here we have the input field for the email. So I'll just copy this line of code from here. And let's scroll up and I'll just paste it over here. And we need to add a class of form input. And then lastly, we have this text area. So let's scroll down. And here we have the text area for the message. So I'll just copy this. And uh, let's scroll up and I'll just paste it over here. And let's also add a class over here called form input. And then lastly, we have this button. So let's scroll down. And here we can see the contact form button. So I'll just copy this line of code from here. And let's scroll up and add it over here in place of this button. And now if we scroll down and go to our contact form widget, here we can see we also have a division for the error messages. So let's copy this from here as well. And uh, let's scroll up and I'll just add it inside the form. 
and now we can go ahead and delete this form so let's go over here and I'll just delete everything from here and also this division right now we have replaced all our input fields with the input fields from the widget now here for the four attribute inside the label we can add the ID so if you go back to our website and if we right click over here and click on inspect here we can see for the ID we have contact form one underscore contact form name so this first part over here is the ID of our widget and then we have the contact form name so I'll just copy this ID from here and let's go back to our template code and I'll just paste it over here inside the for attribute now in the same way we can do it for the email label as well so let's delete this from here and here instead of contact form name we can see it has contact form email so I'll just type email over here and here for the message we can just delete this and paste this over here and here we can see it has contact form email message so I'll just add that over here alright that's it with the HTML of our contact form now let's go ahead and add the JavaScript so I'll just make a script tag over here and let's go back to our source code and let's go to main.js file and I'll just copy everything from here and let's paste it inside the script tag now the next thing we will do is add the CSS so let's go back and let's go to the style.css file and I'll just copy all the CSS from here and let's go back and let's scroll up and go to all the CSS so here we can see all the CSS of the theme let's go to the end of the CSS and here we will just add a comment so here I'll just type floating contact form and let's paste the CSS over here alright now the last thing we need to add is the link of the font awesome CDN so let's go back and let's go to the HTML and we have used some font awesome icons so here we can see these are font awesome icons so if we scroll up we can see that we have added the link inside the head tag so I'll just copy this link from here and let's go back to the theme code and let's go to the top of the code and here we can see we have the head tag so we have to paste it inside the head tag so I'll just paste it over here and now let's click on save right now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and here we can see we have the contact button and if I click on this we have the contact form displayed over here now we need to fix some of these things over here the first thing we need to have is a background color for this uh, main container and then we need to fix uh, the styling of the button and I think the font size of the labels are also a bit too large and we also need to have some margin bottom for this uh, S3 so if you right click over here and go to the inspect let's make some changes so for the S3 let's add a margin bottom and we'll set the margin bottom to 24 pixels and I think that looks alright and let's go to the container division which is uh, form container and uh, let's add a background color over here so let's type background and uh, let's type white and let's also decrease the size of this label so let's select one of these labels from here it's inside the form and in that we have this field container and in that we have this uh, label so let's set a font size of 16 pixels and I think that looks alright so let's add these changes to our CSS so let's go back to our template code and let's go to the CSS and here first of all for the form container let's add a background color so let's add a background color of white and then for the S3 we had added a margin bottom so let's type margin bottom of 24 pixels and uh, then for the label we need to have a font size so let's type font size of 16 pixels and the styling of the button was not applied so here we can see we have this button with no styling so let's go back and let's see what's the problem so if we scroll down here we can see for the button we have this selector called floating contact form form input type equals submit so let's scroll down and go to the HTML and let's see whether we have any problems now here we can see we have this input field for the button but we don't have a type of submit over here so that's why the styles of the button are not being applied so let's copy this class from here and I'll just add this class to the selector so I'll just copy this from here and let's scroll up and go to the CSS and here instead of input type of submit I'll just paste the class name over here 
so input dot the class name and here also we will do the same dot class name and now let's click on save all right now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and now let's click on this button and here we can see we have this input field and everything is looking all right and let's add some random value over here and let's click on send and here we can see we have this message a valid email address is required so we also have this form validation for our contact form now we need to style this as well so let's right click over here and go to inspect and here we can see we have this division and we already have some inline styles over here so it has a max width of 222 and it has all these styles over here so let's add our own styles to this uh, division so I'll just close this and let's go back to our code and let's go to the HTML and here we have the division I'll just delete all these inline CSS from here and I'll just add a class and I'll just name it error message and now we can style this using CSS so let's scroll up and here in the CSS we will add some more CSS so here we just type floating contact form and in that we have a division with a class of form container and in that we have a division with a class of error message that we just added and let's add some styles over here we'll just add a font size of 16 pixels and we'll just set the color of the text to a red color so I'll just copy a color from our CSS I'll just copy this color from here and I'll just paste it right here and let's save it now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and let's click on this button and let's add some random value over here and let's click on send and we can see that the font size is added but the color is not added so let's right click and let's see whether we have any problems and I think we have a typo over here let's go back and here we can see we have two hashes now it should work now let's go back and refresh this page and let's click on this button and let's click on send and here we can see that the styles are being applied to the error message now let's add some valid information over here so I'll just type a name and I'll just type a valid email ID and I'll just type some message over here and now let's click on send and now we can see we have this message called your message was sent and the message will be sent to the email ID that you're using for your blogger website now the last thing we need to fix over here is that after sending the message we have all these labels in the active state it should be in a non-active state after sending the message I'll just do it once more so I'll just add some valid info over here and let's click on send and here we can see after the message is sent we have these labels over here it should be in the normal position so for that we will add a timer inside our JavaScript code and we will check whether we have any data inside these input fields after a specific amount of time and if you don't have any data then we will bring back the labels to the original position so let's go back to our theme code and let's scroll down now here in the JavaScript we need to add an event listener to the button so if you scroll up and if you go to the HTML here we can see we have this button with a class of contact form button so we need to reference this in our JavaScript so let's scroll down and here we can see we have the JavaScript I'll just add a constant and I'll just type contact form button equals document dot query selector and here I'll just type floating contact form form container and in that we have contact form button All right now let's go ahead and add an event listener so let's type contact form button dot add event listener and let's create an arrow function over here now when the contact form button is clicked we need to set a timer so let's type set timeout so this is how you create timers in JavaScript and in that we need to have two arguments one is a function so let's create a function over here and the next argument is the duration so we'll add a duration of one second which is 1000 milliseconds now here inside this timer we need to check whether there is any data inside the input field and we need to remove the active class from the labels so I'll just copy this from here because here also we are doing almost the same thing and I'll just paste it down here 
Now here we need to remove this line of code because we are not adding event listener to these input fields. So I'll just delete this line of code from here and also this line of code. Now what we're doing over here is that we are checking whether the contact form button is clicked. So here we need to add a click event. So I'll just type click over here. All right here we are checking whether the contact form button is clicked. And if it is clicked, then we are starting a timer for one second. And after one second, all the code that is inside the timer will be executed. So what we are doing over here is that we are looping through all the input fields inside our form. If you scroll up here, we can see we are getting all the form inputs inside this constant form inputs. And we are looping through all the input fields. And then we are checking whether there is any value inside the input fields. And if there is no value inside the input field, here we are checking whether the value is blank. And if you don't have any value, then we are going to remove the active class from the previous element, which is the label. So I hope you understood this. If you don't understand any of this, you can go ahead and check out the videos where I showed you how to design this from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Then you'll be able to understand it a lot better. Right now, let's go ahead and click on save. And now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and let's click on this button. I think we have some problems. Let's right click over here and go to inspect. And here we can see we have an error. So let's go ahead and check what is the error. All right here's the problem. This click should not be inside parenthesis. So let's go back and let's fix that. So let's remove this parenthesis from here. And here we need to add an error function. And we'll also increase this timing to two seconds so that we have more time to check. All right now let's click on save. Now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and let's click on this button and let's send a message. And let's click on send. And we can see everything works all right. After the message is sent, all the label classes have the active classes removed. So that's basically how you add a floating contact form to your blogger website. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.